The Smithsonian's National Zoo is a top tourist draw in Washington, D.C., with more than two million visitors a year, but unseen by the public, a series of recent mishaps that put animals at risk. Cheryl Atkinson has been investigating. She's at the National Zoo this morning. Cheryl, good morning. Good morning, Nora. Last month, a zebra attacked a zookeeper, severely injuring him, and an endangered gazelle spooked by the commotion broke his neck. It's just the latest in a string of incidents that has some insiders questioning management at the nation's animal showcase. The National Zoo is a leader in animal care, science, and the cute photo op. But behind the scenes, five sources with more than 35 years combined experience at the zoo are raising concerns to CBS News about recent animal injuries, deaths, and escapes. We started an intensive search for Rusty, the red panda. The sources don't want to be identified for fear of retaliation. They say problems began last year when the zoo doubled the population of the cheetah conservation station, adding a half dozen new species, but no extra space. And you know, I sometimes call it fetch and pray. You get the animals and then you pray that the project will work out. Animal biologist Mark Beckoff was an independent reviewer in a 2005 investigation of the zoo that found systemic problems at the highest levels. We asked him to look at the new complaints, which blame poor planning for a rash of incidents. These hornbills were kept in an indoor shack for eight months because their exhibit wasn't ready. A Red River hog that arrived with this one quickly became malnourished and died of an infection. A vulture temporarily escaped, so did a red panda. Oraxis, sitatungas, and hogs got overly aggressive when mixed, and some were injured in vicious fights. It's no surprise to me as a field biologist that so many of them do not work out. They're, they're, ju they're just too hastily put together, and they're not well thought through. Two animals, the Dama gazelle and a pregnant kudu, died after they got spooked and broke their necks in their confined spaces. <laughs> Pamela Baker Masson is the zoo spokeswoman. She says the zoo meets the highest industry standards, that the animals always have appropriate space and the best care. We take great care in introducing our animals to these various habitats and transitioning them. Um, Ideally, uh, these things wouldn't happen, of course. CBS News has learned the zoo convened a task force in August to investigate complaints, but they won't release the report. This is a public facility. Don't you think the public has a right to know these processes going on at the zoo as they're happening and not have to wait until someone decides the report's ready? We're more than happy to do that, but we, we have to do it in a thorough and uh, process-oriented way that makes sense. For now, their public focus is on the upside, like the tiger cubs that went on display last month. The zoo told us it still doesn't know how that zebra got to the zookeeper last month, and they wouldn't release any more information on that, even though it's considered public information. We're told that the zookeeper was recently released from the hospital after nearly three weeks. Charlie and Nora. Cheryl, thank you.